Hello, Wonder Hussy here at a place called the Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge, which is located smack dab in the middle of nowhere in a place called the Amargosa Valley. The Amargosa Valley is this vast, barren desert landscape just outside Death Valley National Park. Only it's really not that barren at all when you get up close and personal with it. That's right, Amargosa Valley is actually home to a mysterious and beautiful oasis where turquoise blue Caribbean pools spring up from, well, what looks like a barren desert. It's amazing, especially when you look at the landscape all around us. I mean, imagine being an early settler, making your way west, crossing the vast and unforgiving Mojave Desert, and it's hot, and you're tired, and there's no water anywhere in sight. And then you stumble on this place. What's now the Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge has always been an exceptionally unique place in the middle of this unforgiving landscape. There's something like 29 different endemic species of plants and animals found here. That means species that are found nowhere else on Earth. They only exist here at Ash Meadows. And it's all fed by this ancient fossil water system. Fossil water is what they call, well, all the springs in this wildlife refuge come from an underground aquifer, way deep underground, and the water's like 10,000 years old. Uh, I don't really understand the science of it, but a lot of people, well, a lot of people say that it has mysterious health benefits because it's so ancient. And well, there were actually a lot of Native American myths and legends around the mysterious underground aquifer here at Ash Meadows, or I should say what's today called Ash Meadows. You may have heard of the Devil's Hole, which is a narrow little unassuming looking opening into the ground full of water, but it's so deep that no one has ever been able to map it. It's a really famous attraction. It's here in the park as well. I've made a video about it. And Charles Manson spent many hours contemplating if he should somehow scuba dive to the bottom to reach a vast underground world of milk and honey where him and the rest of the family could wait out the apocalypse. So yeah, there's a lot of weird beliefs about this ancient fossil water, but whatever you believe, well, there's no disputing the fact that this is really a rare and special place. I mean, you don't see water in the desert right outside Death Valley, let alone water that looks like this. And because it's such a unique and exceptional place, people have been trying to develop it for centuries. I mean, obviously the Native Americans, I think it was the, the Nuwu tribe. I've seen it spelled different ways. So I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but that tribe of Native Americans lived out here and it was probably a very sacred place to them. I mean, they had their beliefs about the, you know, mysterious underground river. And then once the white man rolled in, well, a bunch of ranchers and settlers came in and saw all this water and thought, well, by golly, I'll just irrigate this land and grow crops. But it wasn't just in the 1800s that man in his infinite folly thought he might tame this desert landscape. Even as recently as 1980, there were plans to develop like a large scale, oh gosh, it says here, in 1980, Preferred Equities Corporation's proposal to build hotels, strip malls, an airport, and over 30,000 homes at Ash Meadows stirred quite a controversy. That's right, I guess some cockamamie developer saw all this water out here and, well, we're only like an hour outside Las Vegas, so he thought, well, by golly, I'll just develop it into a master plan community called Calvada Lakes. <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, look at this legend. Yellow is a state single family. Orange is residential single family. Low density, mid density, high density, mobile homes, RV vehicle sites, commercial, industrial, airstrip, agriculture, green areas, ponds, lakes, community facilities, hotel, motel, paved streets, federal lands. Holy moly, did he ever have plans. And look at that. <laughs> the poor little devil's hole sitting right outside it. Can you imagine? I mean, right now we could be standing in the middle of a city full of hotels, motels, RV parks, and airstrips, but we're not. We're walking on this quaint wooden boardwalk through a very peaceful desert on an eerily calm winter's day. And for that, we have something called the Amargosa pupfish to thank or curse, I guess, depending on your point of view. I mean, there were a lot of people, the developer included, who were probably 
mighty chafed at the thought that the federal government would step in and put the kibosh to their plans of building a new Las Vegas out here. But that's just what happened, because that little Amargosa pupfish, which lives in the Devil's Hole, and if you've ever been to the Devil's Hole or seen it, and I made a video about it, I'll put a link up here, it's a tiny little opening with a little kind of rock shelf in it. It's only covered in like three inches of water or something like that. Well, that's the entire habitat of this pupfish. It exists nowhere else in the world, but on this one little shelf and these three inches of water in this weird deep cave here at Ash Meadows. So I guess back in the 70s sometime, a bunch of environmentalists got together and successfully lobbied Congress to make the Amargosa pupfish an endangered species. That's right, a federally protected species under the Endangered Species Act. And because it was federally protected, well, that meant they couldn't build this Calvada Lakes development because, well, realistically, it would have sucked all the groundwater out of this area and it probably would have, well, it probably wouldn't have dried up the Devil's Hole since it's so deep, no one's ever mapped the bottom of it, but it almost certainly would have dried it up past the point of that little ledge where these pupfish live. And that by itself was enough to stop the whole plan. Isn't that wild? A tiny little fish able to put the kibosh to some big fancy developer's plans? <laughs> when does that ever happen? I mean, look at this pool. Ugh, I told you it was Caribbean blue. How amazing would it be to plop your butt in a floaty and sit right in the middle there? Oh, it'd be amazing. Well, unfortunately, there's no swimming allowed here because of that dang pupfish. And it's also, well, a protected wildlife refuge nowadays. But imagine if that Calvada Lakes guy had had his way. Well, this right here might be a water feature in the middle of a golf course. Look there in the middle. You can see the spring kind of bubbling up from under the earth, coming from the ancient fossil aquifer. Fortunately, or unfortunately, I guess, depending on your point of view, Ash Meadows was never developed. And in 1984 or 1985, the federal government officially designated it a national wildlife refuge. So now nothing will ever be built out here other than this boardwalk and this visitor center. But there are homes and developments scattered all throughout Amargosa Valley, very sparsely. I mean, if you drive through Amargosa Valley today, you'll see homes and trailers and the odd business sort of scattered throughout this vast valley because there are still people living out here. And I guess there's people living out here whose families have been out here for generations. You know, the first white people settled out here in the mm, 1870s, 1880s, sometime around then. And I guess, well, maybe some of their descendants are still out here. And what's really interesting out here is, I guess when they created this National Wildlife Refuge, well, I guess they bought up as much of the land as they could but there were still some private landowners that didn't want to sell. So if you look at a map of the Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge, you'll see there's little pockets of private land here and there. Like I made a video at an abandoned brothel <laughs> that used to operate out here that I think was called Vicky's Sky Ranch. <laughs> and then there's a zeolite mine, which is uh, the stuff they used to make cat litter. And then there's another place that I just found out about that sounds especially interesting. All right. Wow. This is a sort of semi-abandoned Christian camp called Patch of Heaven. And well, uh, you might not agree with their definition of heaven, because, well, looking around at it now, it doesn't really look too heavenly. It's pretty scrubby and dry, and well, there's no one around except a few lonely burrows back there in the distance. But that wasn't always the case. This Patch of Heaven Christian camp was, at one time, a really nice getaway for church groups. I mean, if you look through the gate here, which it says private property, no trespassing. So if the owners are watching this, I'm totally not gonna trespass. I'm just gonna look through the gate. Anyway, you can see they built up what looks like an entire kind of like fake Old West ghost town. I'll zoom in. Like an assay office and a bunch of false 
storefronts. There's probably an old jail. Uh, looks like there's, oh, I read online that there was like little cabins you could stay in and like a campground. And then way back in the distance there, you can see there's an actual house. So maybe that's where, that's like the meeting hall where they would have their church meetings. Or I guess they're not called church meetings, like church services. That's where they would have church. Anyway, yeah, this all used to be a relatively lush and beautiful private Christian retreat. Uh, from what I was able to read online, and I just randomly stumbled on this story and I found it fascinating, a couple from Las Vegas bought this property back in, mm, I think, 2006. And when they bought it, it had a beautiful stream running through it. You know, that beautiful Caribbean blue, crystal clear fossil water that we saw over by the visitor center. Well, they had one of them, their streams running right through their property. And because of that, there was a lot of trees and greenery and bushes and flowers and gosh, I don't know what all else, but that's probably how they gave it the name Patch of Heaven. Okay, if you hear any kind of weird noises, it's these burrows over here. <laughs> They're probably going to start braying right in the middle of what I'm saying. So don't mind them. That's just Larry, Moe, and Curly or Manny, Moe, and Jack or the Three Wise Men. What do I know? Anyway, you're probably wondering, well, how did this Christian camp dry up and turn into this tumbleweed strewn wasteland. Oh, look, a cat. Oh, look, there's a cat living out here at this abandoned Christian camp. How weird. And that's a big cat, and it looks like it's pretty well fed. I wonder if anyone's still living out here. Hi, pussycat. Tell us what happened. Where did everybody go? Huh? Where is everybody? I love you. Oh, wow, look at this cat. He's so friendly. Hi, boss. Aw, oh, look at this. And the cat's in really good shape. His fur is nice and fluffy and white, living all by himself out here at this creepy Christian camp. Oh, wait, there's a black cat, too. <laughs> okay, so he's got at least one friend. Okay, anyway, uh, I don't have that much battery life remaining on my camera, so I better tell this story quick before I run out of juice. Okay, the story that I was able to figure out online is a couple from Vegas bought it back in 2006, turned it into this beautiful Christian retreat, and they would. They would host, uh, I don't know what you call it, church meetings, revivals, whatever, like summer camp type things where different <clears throat> Christian church groups would come out here and sing and praise and <laughs> worship. <laughs> I don't go to church, so I'm not quite sure how that works, but golly, I'll bet it was an amazing place. So how did it get all dried up like this? Well, it's funny you ask. We are right in the middle of this Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. So this place is literally surrounded by the federal government. Oh wait, hold on. The federal government. Anyway, I guess what happened was uh, when they bought the property and it had that beautiful stream running through it, well, that wasn't technically a natural stream. Okay, like I said at the beginning of this video, this whole area is exceptionally unique and frankly bizarre because of all this gorgeous standing water in the middle of an otherwise completely barren landscape. And that's, I think, because the Amargosa River, which is a river I talk a lot about in my videos, it's a really mysterious, mostly underground river that flows from its headwaters up near Beatty in a sort of meandering J-shaped path where it finally ends in a bad water basin in Death Valley. But that river comes right through this valley and I think that's why there's all this beautiful crystal clear springs and pools and little riverways. Well, some old time settler that originally owned this land diverted some of those springs. Okay, there's a spring called Long Street Spring somewhere up there. And there's a spring called Sourdough Spring somewhere up there. And there's a Fairbanks Spring and a Soda Spring, the latter two of which I guess originally flowed out into, well, this whole area was called the Carson Slough. I think that's how you pronounce it, S-L-O-U-G-H. A slough is kind of like a name for a sort of like a wetland waterway. It's not really a river or a stream. It's just sort of a marshy water course, I guess, for lack of a better word. Well, believe it or not, out here in this barren desert, there was such a water course, the Carson Slough, and Soda Spring, and Fairbanks Spring, and probably a bunch of other springs all fed into that slough, and it provided this really lush riparian habitat where migrating birds could 
stop and rest for a few days and all kinds of desert animals would come and drink like the bighorn sheep and probably there used to be antelope here back in the day and bobcats and who knows what all else well back before the advent of white settlement this was a beautiful natural wetland with this lush carson slough running through it well fast forward to whenever whoever settled this property in the first place got it what did he do well he wanted to i think he wanted to farm peat peat moss believe it or not yes you can i guess they call it mine not farm you can mine peat in the desert right cat cat's following me this poor cat's probably lonely but it looks well fed so oh gosh i don't know anyway uh, i don't want to get distracted from my story of the slough uh, the slough was fed by these little springs this white settler came in decided he wanted to mine peat in a peat bog so he diverted those springs into like irrigation channels i guess and that's why there was this one big main spring uh, stream running through this property it was sort of artificially created to irrigate his peat bog and i can't quite see where the stream would have passed through the property i don't know if it would have gone behind those buildings or it almost looks like there is sort of a ditch or a dip i mean i sure would love to just hop over this barbed wire fence and go look for myself but I'll be law-abiding today. Anyway, somewhere on this property, there was this sort of artificially created or diverted by man stream that came through the property. And that's how, how come everything was so lush and beautiful? Well, then the federal government took over Ash Meadows in 1985. So like 20 years before these people even bought this place. And I guess they set about, you know, building that nice wooden boardwalk and building that fancy visitor center and putting that fence and barbed wire around the devil's hole to protect them pup fish. They were busy. So it took them until, oh gosh, I want to say like maybe 2010-ish to start uh, what they called a restoration project for soda and Fairbanks Springs. And by restoration, they meant they wanted to restore those two sp springs and stream channels to their original paths, which didn't go over here through this Christian camp. Where are you going, little puss? Are you going to show us where the stream was? <laughs> oh, this cat is so sweet. I love you. Oh, yes, I do. So basically, according to what I read online, the government went in and like, I guess, dug into the springs. And I'm going to try to drive over to the springs right now while I still have daylight and see for myself. Uh, they sort of rechanneled them back to the way they originally went uh, as Mother Nature would have had it. And well, when they did that, the stream no longer flowed through this Christian camp anymore. And gosh, I was reading some news stories, interviews with these people. According to them, uh, well, I guess everything turned brown and dead, but that could also be because it is January right now. So if I came back here in spring, it might look a little bit better. Uh, but well, obviously they don't have a big stream running through their property anymore. And then something, the, somehow the way the government re, or these wildlife people re, routed the streams somehow also causes flooding here now which i don't understand how that would be the case if they moved the water away but to hear these people tell they have no end of troubles ever since the government started meddling with those springs okay little cat i gotta go we're gonna go look and see if we can see these springs and what they're doing to divert them okay look here as i was driving to fairbank spring i stumbled on this old abandoned concrete drainage canal which i'll bet you anything is how they used to irrigate that peat bog or that peat mine and this is probably what part of what made that christian camp so nice and lush and green but you can see now it's choked with weeds and dirt and branches and it obviously hasn't carried water in a very long time okay well i better get in the car and haul you know what to get to this Fairbank spring because wouldn't you know it there was a shortcut but the government closed the road off so i gotta go all the way around and drive 11 miles just to get there okay wow there's actually a marker here talking about Fairbanks Spring. During 1905, Dad Fairbanks and his sons finished their grading contract on the Salt Lake and San Pedro Railroad in Las Vegas. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you might remember the name Dad Fairbanks from my video about Baker. Uh, he operated a gas station in Baker, California, and he did a lot to develop the town of Shoshone too. So that's interesting. He was way out here 
says, since most knowledgeable people saw little future in Las Vegas, population 300, with no mining and little ranch land, Dad and Celeste Ma Fairbanks, with eight mostly grown children, moved to Ash Meadows. Here, the Fairbanks family opened a stage station to provide beds, food, whiskey, and poker to the travelers, which supplemented their primary business of freighting from Vegas to the boom towns. Then it says the Tonopah Tidewater Railroad opened for business in 1907 and undercut their freighting business, causing the Fairbanks family to sell Fairbanks Spring and move to the boom town of Greenwater, California. Interesting! I didn't realize the Fairbanks family lived out here, but that would have been decades and decades before uh, this patch of heaven Christian camp was even a glimmer in that couple from Las Vegas' eyes. But look, there's a little trail here going to this Fairbanks spring. And there's a bunch of signage here that the government put up saying that you can't swim, you can't fish, you can't camp, you can't have a fire because there's an active aquatic restoration in progress. And that's the restoration that put an end to the Patch of Heaven Christian Camp. Oh, I can hear flowing water. It sounds like it's a pretty good spring. Let's go check it out. Oh, wow, look. It's almost like a little concrete ruin of a pier or something. Oh, wow, look, it's another huge, beautiful, crystal clear Caribbean blue pool, just like we saw over by the visitor center. I'm gonna zoom in on the middle there. Look at that. Oh man, I know it's getting towards sunset, so the light's not that great, but hopefully you can see what I'm talking about and maybe even make out the beautiful green grasses sort of flowing underwater. Look at that, that is so beautiful. I can totally understand why Dad Fairbanks and his family would rather have homesteaded here than in Las Vegas. Look, there's a little trail going through the bushes here. And I think this, oh look, this must be where the spring is coming out. Oh, this must be part of that restoration project. I mean, that looks like it was fairly recently installed. And I'm not sure what that is. Just says Warminster Fiberglass Company. It's not a weir. I'm not sure what that is. It seems like it's just sort of channeling this water. And look at the water, it's coming out at a pretty decent rate. Far out, see what I mean about this place being exceptional and unique and life-saving? I mean, you would never in a million years expect a spring with that kind of flow out here in the middle of this godforsaken wasteland right outside Death Valley. And there's this kind of like box thing on top of it, but I think it's locked, probably to prevent meddlesome YouTubers like me, yep, from poking in it. But maybe that has some kind of gauging equipment in it or some scientific stuff. I mean, other than this fiberglass channel thing, I don't really see any evidence anywhere around here of them diverting this spring. So I'm not really sure what's meant by restoration in progress or where this spring would have originally flowed. I mean, I'm guessing that somewhere maybe downstream even farther, there was a point where someone had diverted it maybe off to the right to go towards where the Christian camp is now. And the park service made it go back over to the left to Carson Slough. I mean, this is all just wild conjecture on my part. Like I said earlier, I just randomly stumbled on this whole story uh, while I was looking at Ash Meadows on Google Maps. And I saw this weird abandoned looking patch of heaven Christian camp and I thought, well, what could that be? And so I Googled it and these news stories came up of these owners like, they're not, or they weren't going down without a fight. Unfortunately, it kind of looks like, well, maybe they did give up that fight. Uh, I still have just a little bit of daylight left. Let's go back to the Christian camp one more time so I can wrap up this video there. Ugh. Made it here with just enough daylight left to get one final peek. And dare I say, this place looks even creepier in the gloom of twilight. <laughs> I mean, what's really creepy is there's a light on over there. I saw that light on and I thought, oh gosh, is there somebody living here? But I think it's just a security light. Man, it's really a shame because I bet this Christian camp actually was really neat back in its heyday. I mean, if you can use your imagination and picture green trees and green grasses and bushes and flowers and little kids running around singing songs about Jesus and 
oh gosh, I think there's like an area in the back with like a big communal cafeteria where they made, I don't know, fried chicken and cornbread. Good old time religion food. Uh, what do I know? Like I said, uh, I don't go to church. Oh, look, the cat's back. Oh, I feel like this cat wants me to take it home, but who else will guard over the abandoned Christian camp? Anyway, uh, I just find this whole story super fascinating because I can actually see both sides of it. You know what I mean? Like, well, if I was the couple who bought this property back in 2006 and spent all this time and money developing it into this Christian camp, and then the water that was on my property when I bought it was somehow diverted and now I had no water, well, I'd be pretty pissed. And it might turn me into one of them anti-federal government types, if you know what I mean. But then again, well, if I was the Native Americans who lived on this land in the first place, before all these white people came in with their peat bogs and irrigation canals, well, I'd be pretty pissed too. You know, like a lot of Native Americans got driven out of their ancestral homeland, so... You know, I can see where both sides might have a grievance. And in fact, I can see where even the tiny little Amargosa pupfish could have a pretty big grievance for its habitat being destroyed. Or for that matter, what about all these animals, all these bighorn sheep and bobcats and coyotes and <laughs> cats? No, all the natural wildlife in the area that used to come drink and hang out and the birds that used to come spend the winter in the wetlands. Well, they have a reason to be angry too, so this is one of those complicated situations where I feel like there really is no clear-cut winner or loser. Well, I guess the clear-cut loser in this case is the Christian camp because, gosh, I know they've been fighting it in court for years. I think the sheriff of this county even sent something to, when Trump was president, sent something to the desk of Donald J. Trump demanding that he come in and... I don't remember what the phrase is where you like seize control of it back from the federal government and reroute that spring the way some guy a hundred years ago wanted it to be. You know, like that wasn't the natural course of the waterway. And they're trying to restore all this stuff to be as natural as possible. And I appreciate that, you know, but at the same time, I don't know how that works when you buy property in the desert. I mean, water rights are a huge thing out here in the, the West and the desert in particular. Well, I guess kind of the whole West is sort of a desert, but I don't know if there's some kind of like caveats or clauses in there about, there's a spring running through the property, but it was only running through the property for the last 50 years. Prior to that, it ran, you know, gosh, it's just one more thing to have to think about when you buy a piece of property in the desert, assuming you're lucky enough to buy one that has water on it. You know, most, most places in this desert don't have water. And again, that's what makes this whole area so amazing. And it's what must have made this Christian camp so amazing back in its day. Ugh. I don't know, man. What do you think? I mean, I haven't presented all the facts because, well, as usual, I didn't have time to do a ton of research, but I read a few articles online and well, now that I've driven around boots on the ground and got a look at the situation, I'm still as conflicted about it as ever. But what do you think? Do you think, does the federal government have a right to re-divert a stream that naturally flows a different way? Or was this another instance of the federal government overstepping its bounds and drying up this poor abandoned Christian camp? What? I don't speak donkey, so I'm not sure what his opinion is, but tell me in the comments what you think. I'm running out of daylight. I gotta go. Hope you enjoyed this thorny but thought-provoking video.